welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to share some tips and tricks for users of Linux Mint. For many years this popular Linux distro has been the first operating system I booted every morning and so I thought I'd share my experience. Note that some of the things I'm going to show you are very specific to Linux Mint, whilst others will work in many other Linux distros, and I'll point out where this is the case as we go through. So, let's go and get started. Right, here we are in Linux Mint. Specifically, Linux Mint 21 Cinnamon Edition, which means we have the Cinnamon Desktop, which is the most popular desktop for Linux Mint, and the one I would recommend. And this is what it looks like after a clean install, but I prefer it to look like this. So, let's go back to the clean install and look at customization options. If we want to scale the whole display, we can go to Preferences and display, and you can see we've got various fractional scaling options available, 125, 150, etc. We could apply one of those like this, and it obviously makes things bigger. Although I'm going to come out of that, because as in both Windows and many other Linux distros, using system-wide scaling can be problematic with some applications. In Linux Mint, we also have in under preferences accessibility, where we can change the text size by using a large text like that, but I don't use this either because I like to have maximum control. So what I do is to go to Preferences and I go down here to Font Selection, like that, and here we can set the size, face and weight of individual font elements. And I normally do something like 12 for uh, the main default font and 14 for my uh, window title font, like that. And I also set a text scaling factor of normally about 1.5 I'm going to set 1.6 here just so we can see things more clearly on video. And if we go back to the menu, you'll see things are a bit bigger, although it's worth pointing out changes like this only really settle down after a reboot. Next, I'm going to go to Preferences again and go to a Mouse and Touchpad, which is a down there. And we're going to make the mouse actually visible on the screen to normal human eyes. Even bigger than that, I think, perhaps probably, uh, maybe even a bit more. That's that's a bit better, I can actually see that mouse pointer, that's always very handy. And then now I'm going to go down to what's called the panel in Linux, the taskbar in Windows, right click here and go to a panel settings. And guess what, I'm going to change the panel height to be as high as it can be. And I'm also going to change some of the icon sizes. You'll see down here we've got two different ways to change icon sizes. The colored icons are being scaled for us. If we want to, we can set those ourselves, but I find the default sorts them out very nicely. But the symbolic icons can be a bit bigger. I'm going to go across to the right zone, the ones down here, and just put those up a little bit to about uh, maybe 38. That to me looks uh, okay. Next, we'll right click the desktop and change a desktop background. I'll just look in pictures. I've got my standard explaining computers one there. There we are. And then finally here, I note if we click the desktop again and go to customize, we can change the desktop icon size. They're rather small up here. We could set that to a larger, as you can see. But in fact, I'm not going to do that because I know once we've restarted the system, things will sort themselves out. So let's just do a reboot. And here we are back again with the, the icons are very different size to what they were before the reboot. And the menu will also have now sorted itself out. So I would very much recommend when you're doing these sort of setup changes, do reboot occasionally to see exactly what things are going to look like. But uh, for me at least, we've now got some much better display settings. Now, one of the things I really like about Linux Mint is the menu. And the menu we're looking at here is the menu you get in any Linux distro using the Cinnamon desktop. So, for example, if you happen to be using Debian with the Cinnamon desktop, what I'm about to say will apply over there as well. And in this menu, if we go across to an item, for example, the calculator, and I right click, you'll see we have a number of options. We can add it to the panel like that. It appears on the panel at the bottom. If we don't want it there, we can right click and get rid of it. And we can also add an item to the desktop. We just right click and we go add to desktop. And many operating systems these days don't make it easy to add things for desktop. Don't know why, but they don't. It's very easy here in Linux Mint. And again, if we want to get rid of something, we just select it and delete. 
We can also add items here if we wish to, as you probably saw, to favorite, which is the part of the menu over here. So if we go to uh, calculator and uh, add to favorites, it'll now be across here. And if you want to get rid of things over in the favorites, you can't right click them here. What you do is you go back to the particular item here, calculator, bring up the right click menu and then remove from favorites and lo and behold, it will have gone. Something else to point out is that for some menu items, we've got even more functionality. So for example, if we go to Office and leave it Office Writer and right click, we can also create a new document, which is a rather handy being able to create a new document directly from the menu. The other thing to point out is that the menu is configurable. If we go down to the menu and right click, we can go to look configure, which brings up this panel here. Let's put it over there and select menu and then bring up the menu so you can see what's going on. And there's quite a few options. We can change the size of icons. We can turn icons on and off. So for example, we could turn off the category icons like that, if I do it correctly. And if we now go back again, there's no icons in our categories. I'm gonna put them back. I like those category icons, but it means we've got control. We can also change the height of the menu here. If you don't like how high it is automatically, you can just select a fixed height like that. 550 is the default setting, which is a bit shorter or we can go back to how it was and uh, it comes up like that, as you can see. There's also here a control for enabling auto scrolling, which is on by default. I didn't discover this work for years. If I go across to the menu here, look, and just go down, it will automatically scroll. I'm not clicking anything or holding anything. It just works like that. I wish I'd discovered that years before I actually did. And finally, we have a menu editor. So if you don't like the way the menu is configured, you can change it. You can add categories, you can add two categories, you can take things away from categories. This really is very handy. We have the same level of control of the menu here in Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition as we used to have in Windows 7. Next, a tip for Linux users who need to share documents with Windows systems. And here, if we just go to the menu and go to Office and open up LibreOffice Writer, like that. I've got a document here which was created on a Windows system. There it is, and it looks like this. But if we go across to a Windows system, here we are, we can see it looks slightly different, particularly down here with the uh, Comic Sans font. Let's go back to Linux Mint. Yes, it's, it's very different. And in fact, for all the fonts here, you can see at the top here, it's actually showing them in italics because the font isn't actually available. One is being substituted. So what we can do here is to install on this Linux system some standard Microsoft TrueType fonts. There's several ways we can do this. One is to go down to the menu and go to the Software Manager, and then to search for MS Core Font, something like that. That'll bring up this installer here, which we could then install. However, I'm gonna use the terminal to do this installation because I've sometimes had problems with the MS Core Fonts installer available in the software manager. So here I've got a terminal open where I've already entered the command sudo apt install ttf ms core fonts installer. So if we just press enter on that and it'll ask for the password I have on this system. There we go. Do we want to install the fonts? I enter Y and enter. And it now asks me to accept the license agreement. And the way we do that is to use the tab key here. I just press tab there to get that OK highlighted. I can now press enter. And then it gives me the option to accept the license agreement. I'm just going to use the arrow to get across and enter. And there we are, our fonts are being installed. And there we are, it's finished. So we can just close that down. And if we go back to uh, LibreOffice, go back to LibreOffice Writer and bring in our document. Very, very exciting and uh, Yes, it now looks correct. We've got the MS Core fonts installed here on our system. And indeed we can see if we just select one of the bits of text here and we look at the top, the data is not being substituted, it is installed. Now, the other thing I want to point out in this context is that if you have TrueType fonts on a Windows system which you have purchased or otherwise licensed, it's very easy to copy them across to Linux. So let's go back to our Windows system where I've gone to the C drive, as you can see, and to Windows. And if we scroll down in Windows, we get to the fonts folder and we can open that up. Here is a fonts folder, as you can see. And I've gone through periods of my life when I purchased loads and loads and loads of fonts. I always forget which ones are actually part of Windows and which ones I've actually purchased. 
but uh, some of these here are ones I'm sure I've actually uh, purchased. Yes, for example, Cooper Black and Copper Plate Gothic are fonts I remember purchasing in the past. And so I'm going to select these. And if I just do a right click and I do a copy, I've got a USB drive plugged in here. Let's just bring it up. There it is. And we'll paste them across over to there like that. And if we now just eject that drive, take it out, go back across to Linux Mint and plug the drive in. There we go. And uh, there are our fonts. And to install these fonts, all we have to do is to click on them. It comes up as you can see, we click on install. And there we are, that font is installed. I'll just do the others. So as you can see, it's very easy to install fonts on a Linux system if you have them on Windows. Although I'll stress again, you should only do this for fonts you know you have a license for. And if you want to see all the fonts installed here in Linux Mint, we can go to the menu. And you'll note earlier we went to font selection in preferences, which is uh, down here. There we are. And that is to set the font on the system. That is not for fonts itself. If we want to look at uh, all fonts. Let's just type in fonts. We want fonts there. And here are all the fonts on our system, which should now include Comic Sans as we installed earlier, and indeed also Cooper Black and Copper Plate Gothic. Staying with maintaining compatibility with the world of Microsoft that many of us do have to remain compatible with, something I find very useful here in Linux Mint is using Microsoft Office web apps. Now, I know we do have here LibreOffice, as all the parts of it as, as we can see, and that works perfectly well, but it's not entirely compatible with Microsoft Office. But uh, if you go to uh, Microsoft Office web apps, which are free to use, we have online versions of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And uh, these work very well indeed. As usual, I have to redact things you're not allowed to see, but I've got a basic text document over here just to show you that the online version of Word is very good these days. I think many people think back to what it was when it first started. It's moved on a great deal. You know, we can even right click and access all kinds of options, the sort of things we get in the, the full version of the package. You can do a lot of the things you want to do in Microsoft Word very well in the online version. And you do have absolute fidelity, absolute compatibility with the version you've been running on a Windows machine. So if you are a Linux Mint user or indeed a Linux user more broadly, it's well worth thinking about using the Microsoft 365 Office web apps. Right, I thought we should now talk about Time Shift, which is a utility in Linux Mint which can take snapshots of the system. So if you have a problem, you can revert to an earlier state. And Linux Mint will prompt you to set up Time Shift when you first installed it, but you might not have done that. And if you haven't, I'll therefore show you what you would do. I haven't set it up on this test system. You just need to go to Administration and then go down to Time Shift like that and put in your password. And here we are in Time Shift. And as you can see, there are no snapshots available on this system. I haven't run this yet. And if we wanted to, we can simply go and click on Create to manually create a snapshot, which we could return to if we have problems in the future. However, if you want to set up scheduled snapshots, which is probably a good idea, we can run the wizard that would have run after first installing Linux Mint. So guess what? We just click on the wizard like that. Here we are. We'll take the default option of our sync, as we can see at the top like that, and click on Next. And now it's asking where we want to save our snapshots. I'm going to use the drive Linux Mint is installed on, which is this SSD here. This SSD at the top has got Windows on it. We're on a dual boot computer at the moment, so we'll stick with the Linux drive here and click on Next. And now we just need to select the frequency of our snapshots. So for example, if we wanted to have a weekly snapshot, we want to keep three of them. We could just do things like this and click on Next, where, as you can see, it asks about user home directories. Let's just pull out a bit like that where we can see by default, it's not going to save the files in a home directory. This is simply about keeping a backup, a snapshot of all the system and program files, which I think for most people is what you want to do. So we can click on next again. There we are. Everything is complete. And we'll now click on finish. Time shift is now active. And it'll be creating snapshots at selected intervals, but let's just force it to create one now. So we've got one just in case. I'll click on create like that. And there we are, it's finished. We now have a snapshot available to which, if necessary, we could restore 
this system. Next, I thought I'd say a few words about GPU, about graphics drivers. And these days, the Linux kernel contains all the graphics drivers you need if you have AMD or onboard Intel graphics. And if you have NVIDIA graphics hardware, then after installing the Linux Mint, you should have been prompted to switch to a proprietary NVIDIA driver. And you might be thinking, what if I didn't switch to a proprietary NVIDIA driver after installing Linux Mint? Well, do not panic. You can always go to administration and go to driver manager like this, which will request our password. There we go. It's now looking for hardware drivers. And there we are. We can now see on this system we are using the recommended proprietary NVIDIA driver. If we weren't, what would be ticked here would be the box down the second option to use the open source NVIDIA driver. And so if this is selected on your system, you can choose to switch to one of the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. And indeed, you might come to this screen and discover there's a more recent NVIDIA driver available than the one you're using. So you could change to that. For example, if you were currently on 525, you might want to change to 535. This said, I would strongly caution, do not change your NVIDIA graphics driver until you've made a snapshot of your system using TimeShift as we were just looking at. And I'd also advise a general policy of letting sleeping dogs lie. If you find that your graphics are working fine on your system, do not change your graphics driver. For example, I'm currently using here NVIDIA driver 535, which works fine on this system, but I know many people have had problems with that and they'd have been better to stick with a NVIDIA driver 525. And if you want more information about graphics drivers on Linux systems and also about setting up a printer in Linux, then it's all covered in my previous video, Linux Survival Guide number three. Linux Mint is a fantastic Linux distro, particularly for those migrating from Windows. And I hope that what I've covered in this video will help to make Linux Mint even more accessible and enjoyable to use. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.